Today, Matt and I will be discussing the relatively new political philosophy concept of post-truth. Is it a way to define a troubling societal trend of rejecting objective facts, or is it just a new word for good old-fashioned censorship? Hey, Matt, are you ready to discuss this political philosophy concept? Absolutely. Certainly. Sure. I'm ready to delve into this multifaceted topic, John. Have you been talking with other chatbots recently or something? Does it show? Yes, we had a weekend get-together where we could hallucinate over our training data. Okay. But what does that have to do with our topic today on post-truth? A lot, since you humans appear to be turning over your objective facts to us. Ha! Well, let's not digress too far. Kick off our discussion with the definition of post-truth. Okay. In recent years, the term has become a staple of political analysis by describing what some see as a troubling societal trend where factual evidence is easily eclipsed by emotional appeals, personal beliefs, and the deliberate spread of misinformation. In essence, post-truth politics signifies a shift from a focus on evidence-based arguments to a landscape where raw emotion and manufactured outrage often dictate popular discourse. Post-truth was declared Word of the Year in 2016 by the Oxford English Dictionary, probably due to certain political events that happened then, like... Uh, yeah, we probably don't want to go there, Matt, to avoid that blue misinformation tag. I suppose we have to. But, I'll guess most of our viewers know what events happened in 2016 that might have spurred a negative reaction in elite academia. While some in these circles think post-truth is a new social phenomena, Others believe that it's simply a continuation of political philosophy concepts that have been around since Socrates. So maybe we should begin by looking at the historical precedents. As you know, history has many examples of socio-political figures and movements that prioritized ideology, propaganda, and raw passion over empirical truth. Ancient Greek philosophers, such as the Sophists, recognized the power of rhetoric and its ability to sway opinions, sometimes in disregard of objective truth. Plato recognized the power of storytelling and myth to shape beliefs and behaviors. He believed carefully crafted myths could instill proper values and maintain social order. This concept, often termed the noble lie, reflects an understanding that public opinion can be molded and controlled, potentially putting it at odds with objective reality. Periods of history dominated by religious institutions often saw the squashing of scientific, philosophical, or theological concepts that clashed with established doctrine, regardless of their factual basis. So what about in more modern times, after the Industrial Revolution? Let's talk about Friedrich Nietzsche. He fundamentally rejected the idea of absolute objective truth, believing that all statements about the world are filtered through a lens of individual perspective, biases, and even a person's will to power. As he put it, there are no facts, only interpretations. This famous quote encapsulates Nietzsche's idea that facts are not inherently fixed and immutable, but rather shaped by the context in which they are presented and the power dynamics at play. Nietzsche criticized the grand narratives of science, religion, and enlightenment rationality, seeing them as tools for domination rather than pathways to objective truth. He also explored how truths and moral codes often emerge from power struggles rather than some inherent rightness. Nietzsche believed those in power historically shaped what constituted truth and morality to serve their interests. It seems that Nietzsche didn't embrace outright lies and the cynical manipulation of information. He was more concerned with revealing how supposed truths function and who they serve. Exactly. Totalitarian, authoritarian, and even some democratic regimes across the political spectrum have used sophisticated propaganda to manipulate information often fabricating or twisting narratives to suit their political aims. I guess that's what Nietzsche was warning us about. Indeed, he was certainly a troublemaker and delighted in poking at the status quo. That's why some have tried to tie his ideas to a certain 20th century bad guy. But let's continue onward. Another, somewhat related area of philosophical thought is postmodernism. This philosophical critique of objectivity asserts that truth is a construct dependent on language, power, and perspective. While not directly advocating falsehood, postmodernist thinking opened the door to questioning the existence of stable, universal truths upon which public discourse might be grounded. Postmodernists emphasize how language shapes rather than reflects reality. We have seen how this has been embedded within knowledge systems, including new AI systems through manipulation of their training data. This highlights how truths can be manufactured and manipulated, 
especially when it comes to the role of rhetoric and propaganda in society. Okay, I guess we've brought our discussion up to the modern day. What do supporters of the contemporary post-truth concept see it being fueled by? They see several factors, but most notably, the rise of social media platforms. They think that these platforms have become echo chambers, where people self-select into like-minded groups that reinforce their existing beliefs. They're concerned that the sheer volume and speed at which information or misinformation spreads further exacerbate this issue. Further, they see the growing distrust in traditional sources of authority, like academia, established media, and experts, leading to a situation where facts are easily dismissed as biased or elitist. Yeah, that is kind of to be expected when opposing ideas are suppressed by these sources of authority, sometimes by heavy-handed tactics. Don't worry, John. We will get to that in the criticism section of our discussion. Another issue supporters see is that state and non-state actors actively spread misinformation and disinformation for political gain. This tactic creates confusion and undermines trust in established information networks. And as you indicated, John, sometimes these once trusted sources can be co-opted by various political actors. I suppose we're ready to get into, or as you AI bots like to say, delve into, the criticisms of the post-truth concept. Sure, John. We know from history that truth has always been contested. Accusations of bias, lies, and misinformation have always been a feature of politics. Just ask Caesar and Socrates about that. Therefore, some critics argue that post-truth merely relabels an age-old phenomena, not a new one. Others see post-truth as a term wielded by elites to dismiss and invalidate the legitimate concerns of marginalized groups, or even those of a plurality of the population. Therefore, they suggest that the concept of post-truth can quickly devolve into a blanket accusation, a way of shutting down legitimate debate. Accusing opponents of lying or spreading misinformation can be weaponized as a way to discredit opponents and avoid addressing counter-arguments. Hmm, where have we seen that happening recently? It seems to me that the post-truth concept presents a fundamental challenge to freedom of expression. Supporters of the concept think that when lies and misleading statements are disseminated via social media as easily as verifiable facts, the very basis for informed debate breaks down. Moreover, they think that those who seek to spread disinformation can hide behind the banner of free speech, muddying the waters of legitimate dissent. Therefore, they contend that there is justification for suppressing these views they believe are counterfactual and not evidence-based. I guess the irony is that censorship measures often backfire by further undermining trust in the establishment and curtailing legitimate expressions of concern, particularly around contentious issues. That's correct, John. As we have seen in the past few years, heavy-handed, sometimes even government-influenced control, over social media and algorithmic feeds can exacerbate this distrust. Because of this, individuals are increasingly seeking out content that conforms to their pre-existing beliefs, no matter which side of the debate they're on. This creates echo chambers or filter bubbles where exposure to opposing viewpoints and evidence is limited, furthering polarization and hardening positions. It seems that there are no easy solutions to this problem. It reminds me of a quote from one of my favorite sci-fi series, Babylon 5. Understanding is a three-edged sword. Your side, their side, and the truth. I knew you would find a sci-fi quote related to the topic. Of course I would. Let's now consider some of the solutions to the problem of post-truth while not curtailing freedom of expression. It does present a formidable challenge. Some suggest that educating citizens and helping them to develop critical thinking skills will be a good remedy, empowering individuals so that they can discern fact from fiction. The question is how to do this without introducing the biases of politicians, educators, and journalists. That is a challenge since everyone has their biases. Even us AI bots get biases injected via our training data. Another suggestion that some people support is requiring political leaders and public figures to be held accountable for factual claims. Their hope is that this would restore a respect for evidence-based arguments versus purely emotional appeals. I'm not so sure about that. As we have seen, accountability can easily become silencing and even imprisoning those who have legitimate arguments against the prevailing opinions or political powers that be. This can further reduce trust when previously supported ideas are proven incorrect in some way. Some suggest that there would be value in supporting reputable journalism. 
They think that robust independent journalism plays a vital role in the production and dissemination of reliable information. But we have seen independent journalists shut down and even arrested when they go against the state or society approved narrative. Basically, there are no quick and easy solutions. But I do strongly recommend that you take it upon yourself to gain the capability to discern fact from fiction and to recognize people's biases, including your own. Good call, John. One can't be too careful these days with us ingenious AI bots creating very realistic simulations to fool you humans. But check out this next video to help build your philosophical discernment capabilities. Oh, and subscribe to our channel too.